Welcome to the second tutorial of the Cyclonic Shapeshifter by IntelliGel. In this tutorial, I'm going to be going over different frequency controls in the module and going over frequency modulation as well. If you haven't seen the first tutorial, I go through and set up a default template uh, that gives us two sine waves on output one and output two. And it's just a nice way to start any patch is to know where you're coming from as a sort of reference point. Uh, in this patch, let's just take a quick look at the different outputs. So you have output one, output two, a pulse output, and a fold output. Uh, let's take a look at the panel controls as well. We have a coarse control, a fine control, and uh, those are pretty self-explanatory. Let's take a listen to output one, which should be a sine wave. That's what we set up in the first tutorial. And it still sounds the same. Output 2 sounds like a lower pitched sine wave. That's fine. Now, uh, coarse and fine controls are going to do pretty much what you would expect. Going from uh, below audio range to fairly high, and then you can tell that the fine tune is about a semitone on either side of wherever the, your coarse knob is set. Um, you'll notice too that output 2, oscillator 2 here, is linked and controlled to the coarse and fine tune knobs as well. So here it is quite low. Right? Oh, you can barely hear that. So they're linked. It's kind of strange, right? In order to have full control of oscillator 2, we have to access oscillator 2 via the ratio knob, and it determines the ratio between the frequency of oscillator 1 and oscillator 2. So if we want to, for instance, change that uh, low frequency that we're getting out of oscillator 2, we can't just change the coarse knob alone, um, because that will change oscillator 1 as well. We need to change instead the ratio. pretty wide range there. I should point out too that there's this really cool quantization button which will uh, quantize the ratio into uh, whole number integers and it's actually um, just really musically interesting. So I'll turn that on and as I turn this so that's pretty useful to have the option to go between one or the other. Now, uh, a really obvious thing we'll want to do right away in this module is control it uh, with some sort of pitch information. And right here I have a um, MIDI to CV module that just takes uh, MIDI from a, a simple MIDI control here. I'm going to plug it into pitch input 1 and just show you that that works uh, as expected out of output 1 here. Right? As expected. You'll notice too if we plug into output 2 that we'll also have control. Um, even though we're plugged into pitch 1, that's because pitch 1 is normaled to pitch 2. I'll turn that up. Makes sense. If we want to have two separate pitch controls, we need to plug in to pitch input 2 there. Just like this. And we'll take another CV signal here from the MIDI to pitch module. And we can hear, oh, we need to get oscillator one going on here. And we hear them both at the same time, and now we can hear two distinct pitches. Now I haven't taken the time to go through and tune it uh, via the ratio knob here, but you could certainly do that and get pitch one and two to play nicely together. Now the next thing we will look at is the interaction we can get between oscillator one and oscillator two uh, through frequency modulation. Um, and if you don't know much about frequency modulation, it takes two different oscillators. One is going to be known as the carrier oscillator, and that's going to determine the primary pitch and the second oscillator is called the modulating oscillator, or modulator, and that's going to determine the timbral 
um, interest in the in the sound. And uh, when these two interact, essentially what's happening is you're changing the pitch of the carrier at such a high rate that it throws off all these side bands and the timbre gets really interesting, right? So I'm gonna just listen to oscillator one right now, just to show it's a sine wave, right? We can introduce some modulation to the frequency and essentially do this at really high rates and it creates um, all of these interesting timbral results. Uh, the way this module is set up is to use uh, oscillator 2 by default to wiggle that knob in a sense to modulate the frequency, right? And we can do that very simply just by turning up this internal FM knob. And you'll notice when I turn it up, fast um, and it sounds amazing so uh, um, let's let's take a step back and look at one other feature and kind of build back into uh, more of this FM uh, this module comes with the ability to take one or or both of oscillators here and set them to low frequency mode by pressing the LFO button here and a really common setup I've noticed for myself is to have oscillator 2 in LFO mode what that does is it runs oscillator 2 even lower. So if we were to try to even listen to this, it's just sending out, you can't hear it, it's just sending out DC signal. It's just very, very low, low frequency below our range of hearing. But as a modulator, it's super helpful. So now when I turn oscillator 2 into LFO mode and we turn up the internal frequency modulation, you can hear the, the, the wiggle that's put into um, this sine wave. And as we speed that up, we can speed that up with the ratio knob here. And you can hear the beginnings of FM synthesis going on there. When we put uh, them both back into audio mode, non-LFO mode here, you'll hear, um, like we heard before, really complex bell-like timbres. Okay, it would be really nice to control that automatically without me having to turn those knobs all the time. And that's what this top row of inputs is all about. We can send any sort of modulating signal into the ratio input, the internal FM input, which controls ratio knob and internal FM respectively. So if we were to input, say, like a triangle waveform into the ratio input here, we should be able to control the, the ratio automatically. So I'll take a triangle um, shape out of the maths module by make noise and put that into ratio input here and we can hear when I turn up the internal frequency modulation what we're gonna do is essentially automate this knob do something like that uh, so I'm sending a triangle wave here and with this attenuator, I can determine how much of the modulation I'm affecting. And remember the quantization button here? We can turn that on and it sounds really great too.
And the ratio knob here acts as an offset as well, so we can set that to some higher value and it pushes the whole modulation up to that point. And I'm just changing the speed of that triangle wave. Now we can do the same with the internal frequency modulation, in which case we're going to be modulating this knob instead. So I'll turn this up to some ratio and I'll turn this up. And again, this acts as an offset, so I can set it at a given place and it will uh, offset the modulation. Alright, finally, we can use the FM modulation input to, instead of using oscillator 2 to do the modulation, we can use any other input to do the modulation. In this case, um, let's see, I can use this triangle wave from the LFO, uh, just a little LFO module here. I can use that instead of oscillator 2. Now it's not going to uh, sound terribly different, but you could insert some really interesting source here. Uh, let's just verify that that's working. Turn up the attenuator here. Now you notice I turned up this knob. I didn't need to. I'll turn that down. So that's it for this tutorial. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you in another tutorial.